Today I'll be reading Ice is Nice, all about the North and South Poles by Bonnie Worth. I'm the cat in the hat and we're off and away to visit the poles, north and south, in one day. It will be a quick trip in the SS Ice Chopper, my super slip sliding ice breaking pole hopper. The North Pole will be the pole hopper's first stop. It's the farthest point north on the earth. It's the top. Some call this the land of the midnight sun. What's wrong with this statement? Show us, thing one. To call this a land is an incorrect notion. The North Pole is located in the Arctic Ocean. Over most of this ocean, sea ice is floating, so only icebreakers are good here for boating. Snow on land near here can pile up quite thickly, forming ice caps and glaciers that do not move quickly. If you sit and watch and you wait patiently, icebergs will split off and spill into the sea. Icebergs are big and a danger to ships, much thicker than the sea ice or icebreaker flips. I have asked widely and I have been told some very good reasons the Arctic's so cold. Earth spins on an axis that goes through its middle, making one turn a day, that's one part of the riddle. On the side of the Earth that is facing away from the sun, it is night on the other side, day. Earth spins on its axis while circling the sun. It takes a full year till this orbit is done. Six months the North Pole tips away from sun's light and makes Arctic winter one very long night. In the summer up north, when light shines night and day, white snow everywhere reflects sunlight away. Without light, it's cold, sometimes 80 below. That means 80 degrees, less than good old zero. Native peoples live here. You ask, are they nuts? In the past, they kept snug in their sturdy skin huts. Today people live here like you and like me, with houses and cell phones and color TV. Some still fish and hunt, but not in dog sleds. Those marks in the snow are a snowmobile's treads. In this group of people that you can see here are nomads who follow their herd of reindeer. Adaptation is the word, I have been told, for how Arctic animals weather the cold. Seals, whales, and walruses have blubber, you see. These layers of fat keep them warm as can be. The snowy owl's warm in a feathered snow suit. Thing one's wearing one. Aw, now isn't he cute? This shaggy musk ox has a coat of fine fur. That coat keeps him warm. Wish I had one. Burr. I will say this to you, and I think it is fair, that the king of this pole is the great polar bear. He has layers of blubber and fur that is white, but his skin is as black as the dark of the night. The polar bear has an unusual hide. It is made up of hairs that are hollow inside. The skin and hair just cannot be beat for absorbing the sun's rays and holding the heat. As he walks on the snow on four snowshoe-like paws, no animal's safe from a polar bear's claws. In winter, the foxes blend into the snow. White fur camouflages them quite well, you know. They hide in the snow and hope that they may sneak around that old bear and live one more day. Winter year round? Oh my, what a bummer. But for four months, you'll find there's actually summer. In summer, the North Pole tilts back towards sun's light. It is sunny all day, even when it's midnight. It gets a bit warmer. The snow melts in patches. A tiny insect called the midge fly now hatches. Berries and mosses and all kinds of flowers when temperatures rise, are sprouting in hours. Summers bring heat up to 80 degrees. Walk outside with no hat and you won't even freeze. The owl and the fox turn brown like the hair and blend into the land when it is warm there. This place can get lively, it's true, mark my words, when the caribou come by the thousands in herds. They've come many miles, it's called a migration. They give birth on the way, it's no spring vacation. They've come north to graze as long as it's warm and head south before the first autumn storm. Speaking of south, it's time we hop. The South Pole will be the pole hopper's next stop. While the North Pole is found in the water, you see, the South Pole's on land and take it from me. Antarctica's valleys and its mountains steep are buried in ice that's at least two miles deep. One look at this chart in my hand will make it clear when it's summer up north, it's winter down here. If you thought that the north was a cold place to be, the south can get colder, by far, believe me. 
minus 130 degrees, and this is no laugh. It's so cold, I just snapped my ski pole in half. It's colder down south, and the main reason why is these mountains that rise up a mile or two high. Summer's cold too, but penguins come still to eat the fat shrimp and the plentiful krill. Emperor penguins stay near the coast. Small fish and shrimp are what they like most. And then there's nothing here good for making a nest, so father's warm feet cradle their chicks' eggs best. They raise their chicks in a crush all together. They huddle to stay warm in the freezing weather. But emperor penguins are only one kind. Other penguins come here, as you will soon find. Chinstrap penguins, most numerous of all, live in large groups and have a shrill call. Adelie penguins also live in large flocks. Mates watch over eggs in nests lined with rocks. A head stripes the sign of the Gen 2 breed, the penguin with the fastest underwater speed. Whatever great height the rock hoppers may lack, they make up in pluck and have a quick attack. Penguins of all kinds get here in ice flows because penguins can't fly, as everyone knows. They have stubby legs and waddle, you know. They bob back and forth and the going is slow. But way down deep in these Antarctic seas, the penguins can swim with the greatest of ease. Have you heard of this thing that is called climate change? It means the Earth's temperatures are shifting in range. The Earth's getting warmer, and the polar ice is melting quite quickly, which isn't so nice. Students and scientists from dozens of nations are studying the poles from ships, planes, and stations. Their satellites watch the weather and ice. They track climate change and check their facts twice.